The Taken King is dead, yet still his armies writhe and claw at our worlds. Even as you led the assault on the Dreadnought, a powerful Taken war beast fled for the safety of the Shrine of Oryx. The would-be prince, Malok, works to perfect a dark sorcery. But the Reef and the Tower are in disagreement about Malok's fate. Varix would see Malok locked in the prison of elders, whereas Eris Morn believes the flimsy prison could not contain his power, and therefore orders his destruction. What is Varix up to? Why did he want to imprison Malok rather than kill him? Does the creation of the Taken armor and weapons have something to do with Varix's hidden agenda? Welcome back Guardians. Today's Destiny Lore episode will explore some new lore from the April update, specifically relating to the new Taken armor and how it was created, which involves Varix, Petrovenge, the Techians, and the Prison of Elders. This is Mylan Games and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny Lore episode. Firstly, let me explain the short plotline of this April update. You receive the quest, Pretender to the Throne, which has you board the Dreadnought to search for a rising Taken power that seeks to claim the Taken Throne. This is revealed to be Malok. However, Varix does not order the destruction of this rising threat, but rather his capture so that he may be brought to the Prison of Elders. Your ghost questions this logic by saying, you want him alive? Whatever happened to kill them back? Aboard the Dreadnought, Malok escapes capture and flees to the Shrine of Oryx. We discover this location by finding echoes of Malok and providing them to Eris Morn. Eris claims Varix is a fool if he thinks the prison can hold Malok, and Eris orders us to destroy the would-be prince. The Blighted Chalice Strike mission then provides the opportunity to kill Malok. Upon destroying Malok and returning to the reef to speak with Varix, Varix says, So Malok is dead. Unfortunate. Wanted Malok in prison of elders. Would have learned much judging him. No matter. There are other Taken. We are then rewarded with the Taken Sword, the Dreadfang. The Dreadfang has some very interesting flavour text, which I will cover in a different video. However, my initial thoughts is that the Dreadfang text is narrated by Savathun, Oryx's sister and mother to Malok. Kingly brother, I thank you for the gift of your failure. The sword logic demands a pinnacle. We'll dive down that rabbit hole in another video. So why is Varix storing Taken in the Prison of Elders? Before discussing this, I think it is important to understand some backstory lore about the Prison of Elders. We do not know whether the Queen of the Reef, the Queen of the Awoken, created the Prison of Elders herself, or if it was something that was already present when she took control over the House of Wolves. But the idea of a battle arena was taken from fallen traditions, and the Fallen used a battle arena to resolve grudges and status fights. Any vengeful Fallen who lost these status fights were locked away to prevent uprisings and unrest amongst the Fallen. This is detailed in the Prison of Elders Grimoire card. Once the Queen took control of the House of Wolves, she gave the Prison of Elders a different purpose. In the Prison of Elders The Reef Grimoire card, Kate Six believes the Queen uses the prison as a way of developing military tactics and gaining intel on her enemies. Kate Six believes that this is why we were invited to the prison in the first place, so that the Queen could study how the different races fight. That also includes how Guardians fight. In addition, the Queen commonly refers to the captors in the Prison of Elders as her prizes or trophies. This may be an attempt for the Woken to showcase their strength, might and cunningness, intimidating their enemies. However, another advantage of the Prison of Elders is that the Queen can trade her trophies as favours with other powerful sources. For example, Skolas was sent to the Nine as a gift and an apology 
for the Crows entering the Nine's territory. The new Grimoire cards released with the April update provides further information to how the Prison of Elders is used, specifically to how it is used to experiment on the captives. Psylocke the Defiled Grimoire card details one such experimentation. It is called a mind scan. Psylocke is even reduced to no more than just a number, and is referred to as Subject 667. In this card, two unidentified beings are probing Skylock's mind. Under the orders of Petrovenge, it reads, This will never work. We should either bring in a witch or put him out of his misery. Petra said she needs this data. Don't ask me why. In typical Taken Hive fashion, Psylocke mocks the mind probes and says, You're being too gentle. You'll learn nothing this way. The two conducting the experiment increase its intensity and probe more sensitive areas of Psylocke's mind, areas responsible for pain and trauma, thinking that through torture it will give them the data they need. Obviously the researchers, and I use that term very loosely because we don't really know that they are researchers, but for better use of a word, the researchers did not understand that the hive feed off pain and torment, and when they probe this aspect of his mind, Solok relishes in the pain, saying, Glorious pain. And the experiment begins to spiral out of control, with the researchers yelling, It's too much, it's overloading, shut it off. Solok even appears to take control for a moment in time and says, The greater the anguish, the greater the reward. I know you, see your thoughts, I will use the pain, reach in, give me the pain, take away all but agony, through it I transcend, just once more, more. Twenty minutes then pass and it appears that the researchers have regained control and the card finishes with the experiment being repeated again. On a side note, one of the most interesting things about this card is Sarlacc yells, Blessed is the Nastareth. Unfortunately, I do not know what Nastareth is, and I cannot find any information on this yet. It is now obvious that the Prison of Elders is being used to experiment on the Taken, but what are they trying to discover? Another new Grimoire card reveals that they are trying to transfer the power of the Taken for their own use. This Grimoire card is Report Taken Power. It details a report from the Crows and explains how the Techians are required to transfer the power of the Taken. It reads, After some initial trials with prison specimens, we can report the program is now ready for full-scale production. Reports point 0.8 through to point 0.86 cover the trials involving the Techians. The power they wield in the transferal process ensures a 100% success rate. We are now confident only one Tekken will need to be present for the transfer. It goes on to say, Transferred Tekken power has a throughput rate of redacted, which is obviously lower than what we want. Transfer still results in incredible potent arms and armor. So for the moment, this noise is acceptable. Future improvements to the process will attempt to up the throughput rate. As hinted at in this card, the Taken Armor can have an effect on Guardians, what is described as noise, high frequency sound, and the card goes on to say that they are Taken Screams, screams that can shatter plastic and burst blood vessels if not baffled. Whilst Petrovenge, the Techians and Variks seek to continually stock the prison with Taken subjects to manufacture Taken Armor and weapons, their teamwork has not been so seamless. The card also hints that since the departure of the Queen, the relationship between Petrovenge and the Techians has deteriorated, and assassination attempts have even been attempted on Petrovenge. We have defeated Oryx the Taken King, and now our closest allies within the Reef appear to be forming their own Taken army. We unknowingly become test subjects to the Awoken when we don the desolate Taken armor. 
as if to disguise their deceit or to just add insult to injury. The Reef has sold their experimental armour to the Everest Trading Company, who now sells the spoils of experimental torture for a fee. Despite the absence of the Queen, the Awoken in the Reef are becoming a force to be feared, fueled by Techian experiments and the Silver of Guardians. Thank you for watching this latest Destiny Lore episode. If you would like to support the channel, leave the words Lord of War. For some reason, I could not stop imagining Varax as Nicolas Cage from the movie Lord of War, creating selling weapons to fuel a war just to sell more weapons. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Violent Games. Peace.